Um, I'm Laura Smith. Thanks for coming to my presentation. I just want to thank Brand Exchange, Jeff, for inviting me to do this and giving me the opportunity to share with you the importance of collaboration and coordination with VR in our light rail project. The project I'm going to be discussing today is called the Trillium Line Extension. It's based in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. It was it was a 15 or 11 kilometer new line that was developed. We had two stations put on the existing line. We had six stations put on a new line. We had six rail overpasses, and we had a bunch of new structures going in along with a maintenance facility uh, piece that happened next to the airport. So it was quite an extensive project. It's still going on today. We started it in 2018. It's still completing today. So it's been going on for quite a while. Um, in this project, we used our design tools was Autodesk Revit, Autodesk Civil 3D, Dassault Systems Katia, and then for our BIM processes, we used, for the VR processes, we used a Prospect Iris VR and Inkscape to do our visualization pieces. So a little bit about me. My passion is BIM. I love building information modeling. It's what I live for. It's what I think about. It's what I do. It's what I dream about. Um, it's all about collaboration. It's all about working together. I know stuff, but I don't know everything. Everybody needs to be involved to make things better and advance in our industry. I don't believe we can move forward in the AEC if we keep it all to ourselves. I believe in sharing, and I believe in moving forward in that, in that regard. That's why I believe that you have to explain it simply, because if you don't, everybody gets lost. So hopefully it's, I will explain it so you guys all know what I'm talking about. So first, I just want to talk about our existing process in clash detection coordination in our AC projects. Usually this involves a 3D model, of course, that we've designed and built. We take that 3D model, we export it into a format that is viewable within Autodesk Navisworks, which is the tool we use. And then each discipline's model gets overlaid on top of each other, and we run a clash. And you can see with this picture, this is actually a train envelope that we have that's running along the tracks, and we're showing a clash that it's going to run into a platform, or it's going to run into a signal. So this is kind of a clash detection process that we follow. The old existing process was all about a driver or a BIM coordinator that would sit behind the Navisworks model on a computer screen, share it virtually, everybody would log in, and people they would zoom to a view and say, this fire um, head runs into this mechanical duct. Mechanical guy, do you want to move your duct? Fire, or fire guy, do you want to move your sprinkler head? That was how clash detection has been done in the past. But on this project, we actually moved forward and started doing VR. So we improved our process by allowing teams to put on a, set, a headset, walk through the model using Prospect Iris VR. You can measure, you can ask questions, you can find out what the clash is. You're not drive, nobody is driving the session. People are in there wandering around. Unfortunately, I have a, view to, a video with all the avatars when there's like 10 people in the same space, but they're all going around. They're all using the markup tools within the environment, and they're checking, like this is checking the clearance of the stairs to make sure we have enough clearance. They're going through and making sure, a good example is like the fire sprinkler system is not in the middle of a light. On a 2D plan, you're, gonna, you're not gonna see that. In a 3D model in the VR space, you're actually gonna see that clash going on and that coordination that occurs naturally with those two designers. This software also allowed us to, like, if we're going along and you see something that you want to clash, and I'm, I'm the mechanical engineer and I see that my duct is actually going through a window for an architect, I can then go to, I can grab the architect in the virtual environment, bring him to my space, and say, how are we going to fix this? What's best for project? How are we going to make this simplified? Or how are we going to make it easier to build? So those kind of things happen naturally when you're in a VR space. And this, this is a little bit different project because I don't have a VR video for Trillium Line. 
This is a BC Ferries project that was done in Vancouver, BC. The client needed a visual, to visualize the space so they could determine the layout, how the business was going to work, how the spaces were going to feel. They also used this video to sell it for their budget to get a higher amount for the project so we could continue the work. This is using Enscape, which is a visualization tool within the architectural engineering environment. This is simply a Revit model that's linked in. You click a button, you put on your headset, and you walk around with your controllers. It's really um, useful in environments where you have a client that doesn't understand the space, understand how it goes. Uh, the example I have for a different project is we had some church ladies. We developed a church in a different firm. We had church ladies come to our office. We had a conference desk set up. We put them in a VR headset in the kitchen, and they actually tried to do the dishes and do the kitchen prep work, and they couldn't. So because of that interaction in VR, we redesigned the kitchen space for them, made the client happy, that engagement was successful. So this is a very important tool in my, my view, it's a really important tool in the architectural engineering and construction field, simply for client engagement. We also are starting to use this with community engagement. We have a lot of um, requests for proposals in Canada where you are required to engage the community, especially the indigenous population, because we build a lot on indigenous lands and they don't understand 2D drawings. They don't understand, like you can put up a 3D render all you want, they're not gonna get it. They're just gonna be like, oh, it's a pretty picture. But if you put them in a space like this and they're looking around, they can stop and they can look out the window and this doesn't show up, but there's a big crane that's going up. They can look at that and say, well, that crane's gonna impede my view from my house. So those are the kind of things you can do with this. There's a lot of opportunity for it. So when we used virtual reality, what it gave us was the ability to collaborate with the full team better. We were able to bring, like I said, bring an engineer into a space, drag them over to a location within the building and say, your mechanical duct looks awful here. The architect needs to either put a, bul a bulkhead in or they need to fix this design so it doesn't look so bad. Um, fire sprinklers is a good example of the coordination process within VR because fire sprinkler heads are ugly. They're not you know, on their ceiling when you're in an open ceiling environment, they're just ticking down. Customer, clients don't like that. The design looks horrible. Architects get upset, tier designers get upset. So if you're in a virtual environment, you can look at those elements and you can say, you know, if we actually do this, it would look better. Or if we move it over here, it would be better. We had an example with mechanical engineers walking through one of these stations. You know, you have to have fire extinguishers ever so often on a station in a building, anywhere. And we had a fire extinguisher setting on a wall, on the station wall, but there was a column about three feet away from that. And so when we stood at the fire extinguisher and we're messing around trying to put a fire out, you were hitting that column. So we moved it over to avoid that impediment when it comes to fire suppression. So virtual reality in that coordination collaborative space really advances the ability to design better, do what's best for project, rather than what makes the most sense in a 2D environment, and move the design forward to something even better for the client. We, um, using virtual reality also provides better communication. Like my example with the church ladies, it's my favorite example, I love those ladies. They're just these little ladies in a church put that VR headset on, doing the dishes, making the food. They loved it. Giggling. They would start walking around the space being like, oh, what's over here? And they'd try to open the doors into the cupboard. So it was that kind of engagement with the client is golden. And if we can provide that, like that's what we try to provide on all our projects at SNC. Whenever I promote, whenever I answer a request for proposal, <clears throat> excuse me, I always put one of these videos in it. I'm like, we can do this for you. This is what you can do to be better engaged with the design and the design team. Let's see. So my belief, I've been coming, um, Jeff invited me to this in 2015. It was Enterprise Wearable Conference. First time I saw some of this stuff out there, I was blown away coming from an architectural firm. 
blown away that the architectural engineering and construction agency or services hasn't gone this far yet. Like we're still stuck doing delivering 2D flat drawings rather than a 3D model. Back then, this was 2015, 2016. When we're developing 3D models, we're giving you 2D flat drawings. But when I came here, there was actually, I saw Boeing, I'll never forget this, I went to the Boeing booth. They had glasses on. They were helping, they were instructing someone how to, to fix an engine. I was like, how come we're not using that in construction? How come we're not using that in engineering and architecture? Why aren't we using that to walk around the spaces? So to me, the future is immersive collaboration. Like when are we gonna have glasses instead of a monitor? When can we go to a space grab those elements with the client, like those little church ladies, they can actually touch that stuff and move that stuff. How can we bring that environment into our designs and our clients into that design? So to me, these pieces like this NVIDIA holodeck is what they called it. I tried this out three or four years ago. Where is that? I don't know where that is. I don't know what's happening with it, but I do know the biggest issue with the AEC industry is cost. The first time I saw a product where you could grab something and pick it up, they wanted $6,000 a year per headset. The AEC industry barely will buy a HoloLens, and we only have a HoloLens because we're a multi-billion dollar company, or million dollar company. I mean, we're huge. One of the biggest in the world. Engineering, that's the only reason we have it. Little firms don't have it. So that's the barrier to becoming more immersive and collaborative in our environment. And I think, I think that's it. I don't think I have anything else to say. Does anybody have any questions? Ah, yes. So how are you uh, embedding inclusive design in your experience? Um, what we try to do, because we're, um, we're engineering, I was in architecture. So when I was in the architectural firm, I would bring the designers into the space together. So the designers with the mechanical and electrical engineers to help them understand how the design is gonna flow. So, cause an architect wants to put his window there. The structural engineer is like, I have to put a column there. The mechanical guy's like, my duct system's gonna run right through that window. And the electrical guy's, where am I supposed to run my wires? So when you bring them in an immersive environment, all those designers together, and you talk about the space, then I found in my experience that the mechanical designer's like, well, I wanna run my ducts up here and they can draw a line. And the electrical guy's like, well, I need these for my runs. And the structural guy's like, well, I kind of need to support this here. Then the architect comes in and he's like, okay, well, I'm going to put a window here and I'm going to do this here. So there's a lot more interaction, collaboration within the environment. And it's less, this is my design, you have to stick to it. So the case, the panel that was up here and Turner Construction was up here and he talked about how they did, you have to have user cases, you have to have users come into your space when you design it to make sure it works. The same thing, we just did an RFP for a tunnel project, I think. And one of the biggest questions was how's this going to affect the noise in the environment? So our, one of our partners had a noise, a noise space where you went in and the 3D ran through and you had your set on and you heard what it was gonna be like and you felt like what was gonna happen when a train went by. So those kind of things are happening. Like right now we have what's called a lava lab in our Montreal office. I have a little one in the Vancouver office, but you bring the client in, you bring the designer in and you bring the, the people that are in wheelchairs or the people that are hearing impaired or the people that are, are blind let them feel the environment. You know, if you, you can put a headset on a blind person because they get, you have the sounds, right? You want them to be able to walk through and hear what's happening. You want to be able to walk through and feel what's happening. And you can create all that in a VR environment in a space that they can walk around in. Does that, does that answer? Am I going off the roll, rails? <laughs> Any other questions? I can't be blinded. All right. You're all free to go. Thank you for coming.